So the purpose of this slide is to discuss the relationship between adjoint functors or adjunction between categories and their limits and co-limits. So this material has been taken from Per Shapira's notes on algebraic topology, the link to which is given in the description of this video. So we start by fixing an index category I and let there be two other categories say C and D. So let us write this down clearly. So you have an index category I and you fix two categories C and D. Now both these categories C and D should admit limits and co-limits or we can say projective or inductive limits and obviously these limits have to be indexed by the index category. So now we have the following functors. Yeah, so we have functors alpha and beta which are the purpose of which is to just to put an index on uh, category C. So if we have these two uh, functors, then we have uh, functor F from category C to category D. So when C and D admit limits and co-limits indexed by I, we have the following natural morphisms. Yeah, so let us write this down. These uh, admit C and D admit limit and co-limit. Yeah, so this limits and co-limits are indexed by category I. Then there are natural morphisms. Now uh, these natural morphisms which I am writing are a direct consequence of the definition of limit or co-limit in terms of direct product. So if you see this in terms of direct product this is very natural and uh, otherwise uh, slightly more work will have to be done. So in this, now we are writing about co-limit. So similar as the first case. So we have these two natural morphisms. Again this follows from the definition if you think of the definition in terms of direct product. Now we want to number them. Let's number them 1 and 2. And uh, let us give two definitions now. So the first definition would be corresponding to equation labeled 1 or the map labeled 1. So if the map 1 is isomorphic. So the so if it is isomorphic, then we say f commutes with the limits. Similarly, in two, if the map is isomorphic, we say f commutes with co-limits. So that is it. And now we are uh, talk about the central piece of the slide, which is the proposition about adjunctions and limits and co-limits. So this proposition is taken from uh, again from the notes given in the description of the video. Uh, this is uh, chapter 2 of the notes. So you start with a functor f between two categories c and d and let i be an index category. Obviously we will index limits and co-limits with this category. So you start with first. So assume that these categories C and D admit limits indexed by this index category I.
Okay, now we have this, we already have a functor f. Now f admits a adjoint functor d. So you have f going from c to d, you have a functor g which is adjoint coming in the opposite direction. So f is left adjoint to g. So let us write this down, f is left adjoint to g. So if this is true, so if this, this statement is true, then f commutes with projective limits or f commutes with limits in the sense of the definition given above. So commutes with limits indexed by i. So I'm just going to rewrite one again. So we said that if it commutes with limits if the map is ISO. Now the second is uh, it follows exactly in the same way. C and D admit co-limits. So category C and D admit co-limits. These co-limits are indexed by I. Again, uh, functor F admits a left adjoint functor G. So let me draw this again. You have a functor F here, G in the opposite direction. Yeah, then F commutes with co-limits. Yeah, in the sense of um, 2, in the sense of the map we have marked as 2. So I'm not writing this, but you can understand you just copy it down and put an isomorphism. Obviously, you have to evaluate alpha at some index i. So we need to prove 1 only. Uh, 2 is similar. So first we write about the uh, adjunction. So you start in category D. and uh, you fix an object y of category d and you have fixed an object in category c which is the uh, limit. So by our junction this arrow from y to f, f of uh, limit or f of some object. So I am writing blue for a junction. So this will be equal to another arrow in category C. So what is this arrow in category C? It is you have applied G to it, you have GY and then you just have the object this. So the first thing, first arrow in blue it follows from adjunction, just the definition of adjunction. So it is just one to one correspondence between two arrows in different categories. So you can stop here and start drawing what those arrows are. I've already written it down. So now we use the property of or the definition of limits in terms of direct products. So that's why I've given it a peach color. So now you use the property express limit as direct uh, product then you can take this direct product out and this is what you get. Now we will use a junction again. I'm just writing direct product here so that to complete the argument. Now we can use a junction again. So that's why I've written the um, this ISO sign in blue. So GY means here it is Y F beta I. Yeah, since beta I is an object of the category C.
So now again we use the direct product. And this is what we get. Here yeah, in the peach color. Now to make things more clear um, about a junction, we will just draw the two categories C and D and show what the one to one correspondence with which we started was. Start with category C here, category D here. You need to put the arrows. We have a fixed object Y of category D. Fix this uh, limit object here. Apply functor F and G in the right directions. This is functor F takes category C to D, and we have a functor G which takes D to C. Now, so F takes C to D, and G takes D to C. Now we start applying the functors. You apply G here, G Y, apply F, and this is what our first uh, equality was in blue, and this one to one correspondence between the two arrows. And that is it.